Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. We will read portions of Psalm 107 together, responsively dividing at the whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They 
Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Then were they glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found in the, with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak to you as children. Why open wide your hearts also? The word of the Lord.
On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he He was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the storm and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Who then is this? Good morning. We sit this morning squarely between a Sunday of parables about growth and God's gentle work in the world. The lesson we heard last week that popped up in our bulletin again this week we sit between that and an apocalyptic vision of a demon-possessed world this week. A world in which storms rile and threaten peaceful fishermen. A world in which demons are at work. This story is truly apocalyptic in the very literal sense of the word. Apocalyptic meaning to reveal. And it leaves us with a question of what is being revealed. Who is this with the power to still the waves? Who then is this with the power to stop the wind? Today, we are confronted and challenged along with the disciples by this Messiah that we follow and so often struggle to understand. Does he sleep while we suffer? Does he hear us when we cry out? What does he mean when he orders us into boats and sends us, literally sends us out into the storm? What does it mean to live in and with this Messiah's reality? For this is no ordinary storm, is it? We think of the Sea of Galilee as home in some ways to Jesus and his community. You sort of picture this sort of vaguely peaceful place, but it was in reality and continues to be a profoundly dangerous place. Only 200 feet in depth, the sailors among us will know, that shallow a lake is easily whipped up into a mass of crashing waves by a wind. Wild storms blew up on the Sea of Galilee quickly, and it was well known this was the case. It resulted from the differences in temperatures as they met and crashed. You see, the Sea of Galilee is 680 feet below sea level, and the mountains surrounding it rise to heights of 2,000. So as that cool air drops, particularly at night, and the pressure changes meet, intense storms are common. Indeed, the fishermen who braved these waters regularly to bring food to the local community were esteemed because of the dangers that they faced in their daily work. So it is to this place, this darkening body of water, that Jesus orders the disciples to go and to go out into. He sends them to go into a place where life and death 
meet. A threshold place, a liminal place. And they go there that they might move ahead. The storm that blows up is fierce and violent, a furious squall, one says, a great windstorm, another. The wind with the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was literally being swamped. In their fear, the disciples cry out. They cry out for help and their cry awakens Jesus, who has been quietly asleep on the bow. His immediate response is to rebuke the storm, causing it to immediately cease. He does so using the same word he will use to rebuke demons and those he meets along the way. Who then is this? He is, one theologian notes, literally in himself an apocalypse. Jesus is an apocalypse. He is a revelation of the living God. And here we are witness to the challenge that Jesus makes over and over in these pages. He challenges the power of death and challenges death-dealing spirits. We are witnesses to Jesus' refusal to accept those things which work against human flourishing. With swift and awesome authority, Jesus stills the storm, leaving the disciples in fear. Though our NRSV translates this as awe, it would more correctly be understood to be in fear. Certainly, at best, unsettled in the hands of a God who has led them into a stormy night. This is the one, this is the one who has come to teach us how to walk in the power of the resurrection. This is the one who will slowly and carefully teach us in the weeks ahead of the power of life over death. The great Anne Lamont completely irreverent, life-filled Christian writer, single mom, recovering alcoholic. She says that the first great prayer we pray is help. Help, she says, allows us to release ourselves from the absolute craziness of trying to be our own or someone else's higher power. Praying help allows us to stop and turn our eyes from the Gordian knot of our own problems and to focus on something else, perhaps to the hills from whence help will come. Because friends, this gospel, the gospel, is the very practice of resurrection in the midst of tragedy. In our moment of crying, help, are you there? Are you listening? The incarnational truth of the living God has the opportunity to go deep within us. It has the opportunity to become more than a platitude in a crisis. It has the opportunity to actually become knowing within us, knowing at a soul deep level that we are held. In Lamont's words, a crack in your disbelief is how the light gets in. It's how you begin to start practicing the presence of God. Several years ago, I was working in a local hospital. I was called to the room of an elderly woman who was at the end of her life. She was, had had a long, long life. And gathered in her room, as so often happens, were many generations of her family and all the evidence of a family that has set up camp in a hospital room. All the snacks and games to entertain the children, all the different things people needed to get through the day. As I came into the room, the family quickly directed me to her husband, a lean elderly man who was standing to, at her bedside. I went over and stood beside him, introduced myself, and for some time we shared stories, lovely stories about her, about him, about their life together. And then he leaned in. He 
he leaned in so he could speak very quietly to me. And he said, Pastor, they want to move my wife. They want to move her from this room. They want to take her to some place called hospice. I said, yes, that makes perfect sense. He got very quiet and then he leaned in again and he said, tell me the truth. Are they taking her outside to die? It took me a couple of very painful moments to understand what he was asking me. And then I realized he was asking me if because she is a black woman, are they taking her to a back corridor to just simply end her life? As an elderly black American man, he was very familiar with death dealing spirits and with systems of injustice that prevent human flourishing. Thankfully, I was able to walk him to the hospice floor nearby. We were able to look into the room, see the sunny windows, the families gathered there and talk to the staff. Reassured, he agreed that afternoon to let his wife be moved to this new space. That day, in his weathered face, I saw the challenge to the storm. It's in these liminal spaces, the places of storm and death that Jesus is most revealed to us. The Jesus that calms our outer storms, the Jesus that asks us, where, where is your faith? So as we answer the question of who then is this, we might answer it by saying, this is the one who will urge us to love and love well, even when we know that it will mean loss one day. This is the one who sends us into storms, storms of racism to rebuke in his name. This is the one who will send us out, but will never send us alone, always sends us with others. And at the end of the day, is there to welcome us home, continually saying to us, I'm with you. I am with you. Amen. Standing as you are able, let us affirm the word of our faith in the night and free. We believe in one God, Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is in Jesus. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God, true God, God is not made of the one being the Father. Through him all this is made for us and for our salvation. He came down. That power of the Holy Spirit began to harden the Virgin Mary and the same man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was killed. Holy God, 
Lord our God, who creates all things and promises us an eternal realm, hear our prayer of intercession, spoken and unspoken. We pray for peace. Eternal God, you sent us a Savior, Jesus Christ, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. Send peace to the places where greed, pride, and anger turn nation against nation, race against race, church against church. We pray for the leaders of the church and the nations. Mighty God, sovereign over all, give the leaders of the church and the leaders of nations the vision of your kingdom that they may lead us with justice and goodwill. We pray for the earth, God's creation. God of creation, you made all things in your wisdom and love. Grant us all a reverence for the earth, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to, the, and to your honor and glory. We pray for those who are in pain in body and mind. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick. Stand with those who sorrow. Show them hope by your word. Bring healing as a sign of your grace. We pray especially today for Joe Bush, Janet Bush, Susan, Gay Evans and family, Les and Marion Hill, Susan, John Wells, David Wagner and family, Katie, Abram, Poet Mill, Tyson, Patrick, Carol and Don Ferguson, Jennifer and Brent Guernsey and family, M.E., Barbara, Marion Evans, Richard Sellers, Jenny Berg, Dorothy Henry, Joan Freer, Jim Foster, Beatrice, Joan Snyder, Arison, Virginia Clark, Priscilla Green, and L.B. Berg. And at this time, I will read the petitions from our Zoom chat. For Nina, for Patty F, Joe B, and Danny G, for all who are suffering in mind and body, for Donna G, for JR who is recovering from COVID, for Mark S, uh, for John Olson's father-in-law Ken, who is recovering from surgery, for Kathy and her son, Sebastian, who lost his battle with depression yesterday and took his own life. For Laura and her children, Olivia and Cooper. Let us pray for friends and families. God of love, bless us and those we love, our friends and families, so that by drawing close to you, we may be drawn closer to each other. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who died for us and rose for us, who reminds us of your saving grace. Amen. Thank you.
Let us confess our sins against God and our name. God, have mercy. We confess that we have sinned against you, those of your will in our lives. We have denied our goodness to each other, in ourselves, in our own We repent of the evil that displays us, the evil we have done. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Brent Guernsey, and I am the uh, Buildings Commissioner, Buildings and Grounds, along with Bill Price. And welcome back. Welcome back, especially those, this is your first Sunday back in the church. You know, things are changing rapidly. And I'm so glad that you're back. Uh, there's a couple announcements to pass on uh, that are in the bulletin. Uh, first, there is a uh, film tonight, uh, this, this uh, Friday, the 25th, uh, called Soul. It's a Disney Pixar movie uh, that's going to be shown on the lawn. So bring chairs and, and blankets. There's going to be snacks served. It's a Pixar movie, which means small children will really enjoy it, but slightly larger, older children also enjoy it. Uh, Pixar movies are just fantastic. This is one I've not seen, so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to come. Uh, there's also a prayer walk that's been set up in the woods just outside of, of the uh, Hanover parking lot, uh, thanks to the great work of John Quinn and company. Uh, there's also a couple of very large and now dead oak trees uh, also facing over our parking lot for uh, Hanover Avenue. And those are, the trees are going to be taken down this week. I mention this because a neighbor of AJ's has a trailerable gas powered wood splitter and is willing to bring it to the church, split the wood, which is already dead, and make it into firewood that is up for grabs. So if you're interested in retrieving some firewood this week, and we're working on the date when the, when the tree cutter is going to come, let me or Bill Price know. In our, in our emails, we're in the uh, announcement that was sent out just yesterday. Uh, so we can tell this, this wood splitter guy how much wood he's going to take and how much we're going to take. Uh, and finally, we have an announcement on the... Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Jim Bradshaw, and uh, I want to invite all of you to a little uh, uh, first of its kind uh, holy hike on uh, on Saturday. We're going to start this little hiking group here in the church, and we're going to try to have a hike uh, once a month. And we're going to start at Lake Akatink uh, next uh, Saturday morning, nine o'clock, in the parking lot at Lake Akatink. Hope to see you there. We're going to get some good exercise. Two things we promise. Good conversation and good exercise. Birthday. birthday. Oh, birthday. Jim's here for a birthday. I yeah. thought you were coming back up to no. go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wonderful. This morning at eight o'clock, we had a whole crew, which was really very fun. Well, please join me in praying for our brother Jim. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on this your servant as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. I also um, 
send out a happy Father's Day to all the men who have cared for any child in your life. Um, you know, sometimes these days are difficult days for people, people who might have wanted to have families, people who have suffered losses. And so we just remember them as well. And we'll pray together the prayer we have in our prayer book. We have these lovely prayers in our prayer book. And one of them is for the care of children. So I invite you to join me in praying for the care of children. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us strong, calm, strength, and patient wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good. Following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice. Please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, 
we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thank you. 
Please join me in praying the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Now may the faithful love of the Creator, the healing presence of Christ, and the life-giving power of the Spirit attend you this day and forevermore.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.